September 10th, 2007, three Green Berets led a mission to kill or capture a high-value target from the Islamic State of Iraq in the area of Samarra. But the Green Berets didn't go in alone. They brought with them nine members of their Iraqi partner force. Their target was a high-ranking terrorist leader who they'd been looking for for over a year at this point. The reason they wanted this specific terrorist leader so badly is because he could give them a lot of information on a small group of terrorists who had been kidnapping and murdering the families of Iraqi men who considered joining the Iraqi police force. So if you were a man in Iraq and you were considering and doing some research into maybe joining the police force and serving your community, this group of terrorists would come find your family, kidnap them, and kill them. So needless to say, this was a horrible person and they wanted him bad. The three brave Green Berets leading the mission were Captain Matthew Cheney, Staff Sergeant Jarian Halbison Gibbs, and Sergeant First Class Michael Lindsay. The plan was for two helicopters to drop the men off at a field on the outskirts of the village at 2 o'clock in the morning. But when the helicopters arrived, the planned landing zone was completely covered in water. So they had to set the assault teams down a bit closer to the target than planned. On night raids like this, the Green Berets would typically sneak into the village and find the majority of the enemy insurgents sleeping in their beds, making their mission much simpler. But because the helicopters were forced to land closer to the target, they woke up all two dozen plus enemy insurgents. The Green Berets were on the first helicopter to touch the ground, and as soon as their boots hit the floor, they came under heavy machine gun fire. And to make matters even worse, the arrival of the second helicopter created a blinding cloud of dust, so thick that the team became overwhelmingly disoriented, making it difficult to even find the building they were receiving so much fire from. The brownout was so intense that the Iraqis got lost in it, leaving the Green Berets no choice but to assault the target building on their own. After stacking up on the door, Jarian tossed a grenade inside, killing multiple enemy fighters before rushing in to begin clearing the building. As they entered the doorway, they could see faceless shapes scurrying around the room in the dark, grabbing their weapons as quickly as they could. And within seconds of entering the room, the Green Berets started receiving AK-47 fire. Cheney was shot by a round that went straight through his pelvis and his hip and Lindsay was immediately shot in the throat. And immediately after that, a grenade that one of the insurgents had thrown near the assaulting soldiers exploded. The blast threw both Cheney and Lindsay out of the doorway back into the courtyard. Jarian was knocked from his feet onto his back, but was left alone inside the target building with the enemy insurgents. Lindsay was hyperventilating and throwing up, barely able to move after the blast, and with machine gun fire impacting everywhere, Lindsay rolled himself over and grabbed for his pistol, firing rounds towards the insurgents. Not far from Lindsay, Cheney was completely unable to use or feel his legs, so he laid flat on his back, staying as close to the ground as he could, and dragged the body of a dead enemy fighter close to him to use as a human shield as he continued to return fire at the enemy insurgents, killing one of them at extreme close range. Back inside the building, Jarian's night vision goggles had been completely destroyed by fragmentation from the grenades, so he had no choice but to continue his assault alone and in total darkness. After locating and quickly eliminating one of the main enemy shooters inside the building, Jarian tripped over a dead enemy fighter, and as he fell to the ground, he was shot in the thumb, but was able to quickly regained his composure, and killed another enemy insurgent in close quarters combat. After clearing the building, Jarian moved back to the courtyard to provide cover for his two wounded teammates. But as he approached his teammates, he was shot in the abdomen. 
As the bullet ripped through his abdomen, it felt like white hot lightning shooting through his stomach, and he felt his hip pop out of place. While falling to the ground from his wounds, Jarian was able to pop off a few shots from his M4, killing the enemy fighter who had just shot him, from a distance of only 12 feet away. Completely ignoring his wounds, Jarian then got to his feet and helped direct the disoriented Iraqi police force in finishing the assault. Over the course of a hellish 10 minute assault, the three man Green Beret assault team managed to kill the target along with 11 of his men. And on top of that, they also rescued a hostage that the insurgents were keeping there. This isn't meant to be a knock on the Iraqi police force as much as it's meant to be a praise of the insane skill level of the Green Berets. But in the time it took the nine Iraqi police force guys to find their way out of a cloud of dust, the three Green Berets single-handedly assaulted the target building, killed 12 enemy soldiers, freed a hostage, and secured the objective. That is just insane. All three Green Berets made full recovery from their injuries, and if that wasn't crazy enough, all three Green Berets went on to deploy at least once more. Jarian Halbison Gibbs received the Distinguished Service Cross, the Army's second highest award for valor. Captain Matthew Cheney and Sergeant First Class Michael Lindsay were presented with silver stars. All three men are incredible warriors and American heroes. We can't thank you enough for your service and your sacrifices, and it has been a true honor sharing your stories here today. And with that, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. This is a re-upload and kind of a re-edit of a video I made a few months ago on the channel, but YouTube just really did not like this video the first time I posted it. It got like age restricted and demonetized and definitely got my channel temporarily shadow banned and just in some hot water with YouTube. YouTube just really didn't like this video at all. But this this story, man, it deserves to be heard by as many people as possible. So I am I've changed some of the editing, moved around some footage and tried to make it a little bit more uh, I guess YouTube friendly and censored. I don't even know, but I'm hoping that it'll do better this time because like I said, this is just a story that deserves to be heard and needs to be heard by as many people as possible. So if you guys could please hit that like button and leave me like a comment down below. You can say something incredibly offensive or just say hi. I'll do my best to say hi back or say something incredibly offensive back. Whatever is fine. Just put it down there because it'll help uh, feed the algorithm a bit and help fight against the algorithm that, that hates us so much because I really believe that this is an important story for as many people to hear as possible. This is just an incredible story of valor and I think stuff like this is just really important for our country and the world in general to hear more of just in our day-to-day -day lives so if you could do me a favor like I said a comment and a like just would help push this out to as many people as possible and regardless of if YouTube removes this video off of here or not I will definitely also put this one up on my patreon as well so if this video gets deleted or something just know that it's on patreon and that's a link down in the description if you guys want to go check that out but anyway thank you guys so much for checking out this video i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you guys in the next one